Greetings, my name is Marcus Shingles. I'm a principal with Deloitte Consulting, and I lead the consumer products practice on enterprise innovation and analytics. I'm joined here today by Tom Davenport, visiting professor of Harvard Business School and senior advisor to Deloitte Analytics. Welcome, Tom. Great to be here, Marcus. So Tom, let's talk about the research that we've been doing. Um, so we've spent a lot of time interacting with the industry, leading academics like yourself, and there were essentially five key conclusions and recommendations that we came up with. The first one being that this industry is lagging in its capability around analytics. Well, yeah, it was a bit of a surprise. I mean, at one point, uh, the consumer products industry, I think, was an overachieving industry with regard to analytics. But since then, I think other industries have kind of moved out ahead. And they've really moved more into um, predictive and prescriptive analytics that kind of tell you what's going to happen and tell you what you should do about it, as opposed to the more descriptive reporting stuff that still it predominates in consumer products. Now, granted, there were a couple of exceptions, uh, companies that were being very innovative in this industry, but in general, most had kind of stayed at the same place they, they'd been for, for quite a while. And that brings us to our second point, actually, which is that technological innovation and digital innovation is growing at an exponential pace, and it's going to change this industry in many ways. Well, and I was impressed by the aspect of the study that did, didn't just look at what's happening inside the consumer products companies themselves, but um, you did a systematic review of all of the big data um, startup activity out there that's really going to affect this industry. Yeah, we spent a lot of time out in Silicon Valley and Chicago and Boston, New York, going to these startups and looking at these innovations and understanding what is the data that comes from a mobile coupon app that some of the big CPG companies will be using? What's the data that comes from some of the electronic tags that this industry will see, can use in their supply chain? And that's where you started to really understand, well, this is the big data for this industry. Well, and as, as you have said, um, this industry could get by in the past on the basis of the strengths of its brands. The information flows were largely transactional, but I think um, to now to make your processes better, to understand the customer, analytics are really going to be the only way to go going forward. And there's just going to be a, a tsunami of data coming at these companies from social media and sensors and even the packaging that they use. They've got to be ready for it. Yeah, and that's to our third point about, uh, you know, this industry's preconceived notion of change is about to be disrupted. Up until this point, if you didn't have a strong analytical IQ as an organization, you could actually survive really well based on the, the breadth and the success of your brands. You didn't have to be a good analytical competitor necessarily. That's about to change. I think it is with, um, you know, whether you're talking about marketing or supply chain or even manufacturing, all of these disciplines are becoming more analytical. That brings us to our fourth uh, key conclusion and recommendation, which is really putting more context around how do you operationalize big data, analytics, and innovation. It's, it's analytics and analytical capability combined with some, in some cases, dramatic redesign of business processes, not just within an organization's four walls, but working with, with customers and, and suppliers. And that's a you know, tough combination to deal with. You better start now. Which brings us to our fifth and final key conclusion and recommendation is that this industry needs to start to think differently. The winners are going to behave differently, they're going to act differently. And what we mean by that is not only having that analytical big data competency, but having the appetite for experimentation, for trial and error, uh, to be more agile, to be more nimble. Right, it's almost a different culture. It's a data-driven culture. It's a rigorous scientific culture. And I think it's going to require some new people, too. I mean, these data scientists who help you manage big data, those are not easy to find. The industry needs to start working now to kind of lock up some good talent. Well, thank you, Tom. And that wraps up our executive summary on our conclusions and recommendations from our big data and analytics research. Hopefully you found it insightful, and we encourage you to learn more.